evening, everybody. It's Friday. Uh, Pastor Tosh here from Christ Cornerstone Church, here to give you um, a little bit of a scripture reading, a lesson tonight, and then our nightly prayer so we can kick off the um, weekend. So some people have started a little early with Fourth of July, some people are off today. Um, Pastor Joyce, I know you're watching, and I just wanted to say a quick message to you that I'm not in John as we were asked and challenged to do at the beginning of the week. You know, Wednesday I was in uh, Mark. Tonight I'm going to be in Luke. So I'm getting closer to John. I'm moving in that direction to John. And I guess I would say uh, I'm a rebel with a cause. Because uh, it's a really good message. And, you know, Mark and Luke have good stuff too. So just put that out there. And so you're, you're the compliance person. Yes, I professionally work in the compliance area. Okay, just just making sure we're covering that. Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it happens. So tonight we're in Luke, Luke chapter 20, 21, uh, verses 34 through 38. Um, I want to give a little context on the scriptures and how um, we're going to implement them tonight. So these scriptures are actually starting at Luke 25, 21, 5. It's talking about the signs of the end of the age. And... The disciples are asking Jesus questions because Jesus is talking about the the new coming of new life or whatever, and so he's there, he's kind of talking about at some time there'll be the end of the age. I will come back. I'm going to leave and I'm going to come back. So he's nearing the end of his ministry, and he's trying to get his disciples ready for him not to be there because as we know, Jesus will sacrificially um, provide give himself his body. To persecution and, and death on the cross and so he, at this point in time in his ministry to his disciples he's trying to explain that to them and how this is all in God's plans so that we can have grace and mercy and unconditional forgiveness and that the the laws can be made whole into into that grace that Jesus provides us so he's trying to get them ready so the disciples here are demonstrating that they're eager to know more like hey tell us about these end of times like where are you going? When are you going to come back? How will we know? We're going to be looking for you. We can't live without you. Kind of things like that. So he's kind of describing them to him. And tonight's lesson isn't really about the end of times. But what's really cool when you read about this, a lot of people pick that apart to kind of determine, oh, well, there's a volcano here, there's this, there's that, and trying to determine the end of times. But what's really interesting to me about this is clearly the end of times didn't happen during the disciples' time. But there's some scripture in here that says, I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. But we're not in, in Jesus' time, and we know that that generation did pass away. So it's always God's timing and our timing and how we calculate things is always off. But my point with this is he's still giving the disciples a lesson, and he's telling them throughout the scriptures, and I'm paraphrasing some of it for us to get to the end, um, that be careful watch out that you're not deceived people will come claiming that they're me people will try to tell you that this means this so you need to do that don't be deceived and he's he's talking to them about how they can prepare themselves in more of a day-to-day -day manner and not for whatever future events may happen because the future is going to happen the past has happened the future will happen no matter how much we prepare today for the future, we're living today. We're not living tomorrow today. That's impossible. Um, a lot of us worry a lot about tomorrow. A lot of us trying to figure out what's going to happen 20 years from now, like, or 30 years from now, or how do I do this so I can retire on time? How do I do this so I can do this? Um, and there's part of us that is always kind of preparing for the future. And which is fine because we need to be prepared, but that should be a small percentage of our life. The biggest percentage of our life should be living right here in the right now. Because what happens with us humans is if we start getting too fixated on the future or fixated on the signs that may be around us or the, the concerns around us and we let worry take over, that's when the devil really gets busy and starts to play with us and then our behaviors don't align with who we are as our character. Our behaviors don't align with our Christian identity and 
we can just do some things that are very uncharacteristic. So what I take away from the scripture today when I read it and kind of realized like, wow, they're talking about future events, but then Jesus is totally talking about them right now. And he's talking about how they need to live now so that they're always prepared for anybody that wants to come into their life and deceive them for any hardships in their life where they may get sidetracked and think like, well, if God loved me, then this bad thing wouldn't happen to me. That's just life. Bad things happen sometimes. Good things happen sometimes. And then most of the time we're, we're living and things are pretty even keel. That doesn't mean that disaster is upon us or God doesn't love us. It's just that's kind of life. That's what this world is. But he's trying to prepare them for it. Spiritually speaking, all that's going to happen. How are you being prepared to deal with it? How are you being prepared to bring Christ into a crisis instead of fear and things that aren't of Christ, that are of this world but not of Christ? So here's where he's talking to the disciples, and they kind of go back and forth, and you can go back and read um, chapter 21 of Luke if, if you'd like. I encourage that. But at the very end, he starts talking to them about what I'm, what I'm saying here. He says, uh, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation drunkenness and the anxieties of life and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap for it will come up all those who live on the face of the whole earth will always will sorry for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the son of man so stand your ground and that you can escape all that is about to happen it's really referring when i take that into well how do i take that into my life today jesus it's things are going to happen around me that are out of my control i don't have to let those things take me down i don't have to let those things trap me and take me into a a, a place of complete disheartedness and then Jesus says and then it goes on to say each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on a hill called the Mount of Olives which if you read the Bible the Mount of Olives pops up a lot and Jesus is always going off to the Mount of Olives to pray to be by himself to take his disciples out there kind of away from everybody and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple so a couple things I take from that. One, obviously, we need to be careful with our hearts so that we don't get disheartened, that we don't get anxieties that take us down, that we are aware of what's happening so we can counteract it and be proactive in our life, that we're on watch, that we pray constantly, and that we meet Jesus in the temple and the temple being, we are the human temples now. We can call on Jesus just like that. Do you know a prayer that's real simple? Jesus, <laughs> that's all you need. And sometimes you need to sit and have a conversation with Jesus. I get it. But if you're having one of those moments where you feel that you're starting to get entrapped by your anxieties, you're starting to get entrapped by whoever's speaking into your ear that's not speaking the truth, Jesus, simple prayer that will pull you out of that. Be on watch. And, and, and Jesus is there for you. And Jesus' example is he goes off and he prays, like, all the time. And so make sure that you have that in your life. Because if you're constantly going and you're constantly listening to all the stuff that's happening in the world right now, it's going to be really easy to get sucked into it. Make sure you're taking time to get recharged and to get true to who you are. And to get true to who's really in charge, no matter how confusing it seems. God is in charge, 100% all the time. Sometimes we can lose our perspective on that. I ask you, church, to challenge yourself to be awake, be on watch for when you yourself start to kind of downslide. For when others around you start to be in traps so that you can help pull them out. The song that we're going to sing is you kind of reflect on uh, the message that has come forth tonight. It is called Awake and Alive. It's by uh, one of my favorite bands, and I've sucked Jamie into them, uh, called Skillet. 
Uh, they're kind of a rock Christian band. We're going to do one of their songs, not rock. We're going to do it acoustic. But it's a very powerful song, and it talks about um, how whenever we're woken up to being pulled down and entrapped by the things of this world or by the devil, we have kind of an awakening. And we have like, oh, yeah, that's right. God's in charge. Oh, all right, that's right. I should go talk to God about this. All oh, right, okay, let me pray. Um, and it talks about the hard times, and it talks about the struggles. I love the song, and it's really powerful. And uh, one of the things that uh, my favorite lines, and luckily I get to sing it, is it's getting harder to stay awake and my strength is fading fast. That's pretty intense words. It's getting harder to stay awake and my strength is fading fast. And I'm sure each and every one of us have felt that sometime. But the very next line is, you breathe into me at last. Because whenever you think that it's so hard, you can't stay awake and you can't stay watching, you just need to allow yourself to be trapped by this world. Whenever you feel like your strength is fading so quickly that you can't even get it back, Jesus will be there to breathe that life, that living life that Jesus has in you every single time. So my prayer tonight uh, as we go into the song is that whatever might be trying to capture you tonight, that you wake up and realize that you're in charge of being able to go to Jesus. You're in charge and you're able to understand that God is, is in charge, that God is there for you always. So I'll start talking, stop being now. Stop talking now. Okay. breathe into you every time when you think you're hitting your breaking point. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, for gathering us here tonight, God. We thank you for your messages, Lord, and we thank you for bringing messages forth to us, God, scriptures forth to us that when we read time and time again, God, we are awakened to, to deeper and other meanings within that, God. And I pray for each one of us, Lord, that 
we can get more dependent upon you, God, that we can understand deeper that you are always there for us, God, and that you have made us to be super strong individuals, God, when we allow you to live within us, God, when we allow ourselves to give ourselves to you, God. It's really funny, God, that you created us to be people that want to be so strong, but we're strongest when we identify that you are our strength and that we are actually weak. That's when we're the strongest ever, God. I pray for us, God, to have an awakening today, God. I pray for somebody that's listening to this right now as they listen, God, that we're having any doubts about themselves, about you, God, that you send a revival in their heart right now, God, and their heart can be turned to you, God. Their heart can be softened, Lord. They can understand that they are loved by you. They are forgiven by you, God. Lord, help us to just turn more and more to you every day, God. God, we turn prayers now to, to the world at large, God. There's a lot of stuff of many things that are on the news, God. Um, many things out there, God, that are happening. And I pray for everything that we're hearing on the news, Lord. And I pray for all the things that we're not hearing on the news, Lord. I, God, specific things we pray for our leadership throughout the world, Lord, to make good, sound, wise decisions, hopefully getting counsel from you on how to handle the situation, God. We pray for the protests and the, the, the side speaking right now, Lord, about racial relations within America, God, that your heart and your love break through those conversations, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that when people are coming to the table, that they can come with wanting to understand one another, God. That they come not just thinking about what they want to say, but also thinking about listening and hearing, God. And that your presence could be down upon those conversations, Lord. If those folks speak out your name to join them or not, Lord, you are there. And we pray, Lord, that your presence be there. That by the end of those conversations, they acknowledge your existence, God. And that you can guide the next steps from those conversations, Lord. That is how this world is going to be healed with your love and your light, God. So as this Christian body right now that we're praying, God, we're praying for hearts to be turned to you, God. A lot of this junk that we deal with in the world would be resolved a lot quicker and a lot wiser if we were all on one accord with you, God. And we all turn to you as we just spoke about during our lesson, God. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, have a great 4th of July tomorrow. Pastor Joyce will be with you tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless. Bye. <laughs>